There have been a lot of talks, a lot of articles and content being written that the Packers should have handled things differently, but I'm here to remind us all of the name Brian Gutekunst. The dude knows what he's doing. I'm not saying he is completely flawless or doesn't make mistakes. He is human, but there have been, in fact, there's been many times throughout his career in Green Bay where I've been left scratching my head, questioning some choices and decisions he has done within the organization, but we can come on the back end of it and, and see and understand that more times than not, the dude knows what he is doing. In fact, I think he is one of the best journal managers in all of football. But in this video, we're going to be talking about the Packers get more proof that they made the right decision. Also, I'm going to share an article with you later on in the video that is super interesting. So you're going to want to continue listening. So let's jump into it. When it comes to Brian Gutekunst and what he is able to put together when it comes to a roster and what he's able to accomplish in the draft or through free agency or even the coaching staff and adding Matt LaFleur, who I feel is one of the best coaches in all of football. Obviously, you see the results of that output last season. The Packers, the youngest team in all of football, as you can see right there, and what they were able to do and accomplish in the playoffs, super impressive obviously making history there and the Packers looking to repeat that and then some this year. And when it comes to the 53 man cuts and all of that, obviously happening yesterday, of course, there's going to be a little bit of changes out there, but I don't see the number changing for the Packers. Packers will be the youngest team yet again, back to back years heading into Brazil against the Philadelphia Eagles. Super excited to see what they can do with that this year. But when we start talking about the 53 man roster cuts and all of that, but uh, the Packers obviously know what they're doing through the draft. They know what they're doing through free agency, but more importantly, Brian Gutekunst knows just when to let go of players without overpaying them. What do I mean by that? Look at the dude on your screen. In fact, there were 28 former Packers that made the 53 man roster. I'm not going to go through all of them. Just some key highlights right there. You've got Aaron Jones, who we're going to see two times this season. The Packers obviously recognizing his age, not wanting to overpay him. They let him go. They add a, a younger piece in Josh Jacobs, a dude who's very productive out there. Love the move through that Brian Gutekunst made. Yes, Aaron Jones was a crowd favorite. I get all of that, but he doesn't take that into account. He looks at the business side of things. Obviously, You've got guys like um, uh, Devontae Adams. Packers let him go at the right time. The dude is still super productive out there, but you look at the Packers wide receiver room, you can make the arguments that they have one of the deepest from top to bottom uh, just rosters when it comes to um, wide receivers out there. Um, you got uh, Watson, Jaden Reed, uh, Dobbs, and... Uh, Dontavian Wicks, who are all going to be super productive. Then you look at what Brian Gutekunst did with Aaron Rodgers, trading him when he did. Obviously, you've got a multi-MVP type future Hall of Fame quarterback that they traded away, and everybody was left thinking, like, what, the, what is going on? And then Jordan Love. You see the results of what Jordan Love is. I'm not saying Brian Gut Gutekunst is perfect, but he certainly knows what he is doing. So we need to trust that when it comes to what they did or did not do when it comes to the 53-man roster that happened yesterday. Guys that uh, also highlights that made other 53-man uh, rosters that I cannot wait to see this year. You've got Devondre Campbell for the San Francisco 49ers. We see them in week 11. Patrick Taylor also making the 53-man cut. You've got week eight, Darnell Savage with the Jacksonville Jaguars. Super excited about that one. And you got older vets like Mercedes Lewis and Jonathan Owens um, with the Chicago Bears, who we'll see a couple times this year as well. So what else? What else is a proof that the Packers made the right choices? Well, when it comes to the 2023 output of production, when I'm talking about plus and minus, that is a sports statistic used to measure players impact represented by the difference between their team's total scoring versus their opponents. When the player is in the game, you take a look, obviously you've got Aaron Jones plus 5.2 Razul Douglas plus almost one, almost two one six five. You got AJ Dillon has a plus 0.1.4 Bakhtiari. Of course, we only saw one game last season with him out there. Samori Torre is a plus, 
But when you add all of those up and you take a look at guys that produced in 2023, the net value of the guys that are no longer on the 53-man roster for Green Bay is a net of negative 13.5. When you take a look at some of their key acquisitions, and when I'm talking about last year's production of Josh Jacobs, who a lot of people thought struggled last season, and then Xavier McKinney, when you look at that, you've got a, a, a net of plus 13.15. Those are huge numbers. Brian Gutekunst understands and knows what he is doing. Okay, let's just trust the process. Let's trust what he it has done with the 53-man roster. So what was that article that I was referencing at the beginning of the video? Well, check this out. CBS put out an article just rating the NFC North as a whole by position. I thought this was super interesting, and I want you guys to leave your comments and let me know your thoughts about the article and um, the results of it. So the quarterback position... Of course, you see right there on your screen, you've got Packers, Jordan Love, Lions, Jared Goff, Caleb Williams, and Sam Darnold. They rate the Packers have the best quarterback room in the NFC North. Let's go down running backs. You've got Lions with Jameer Gibbs and David Montgomery. They have them with the, the top rated in the NFC North. And then the Packers right behind them with Josh Jacobs and Marshawn Lloyd. And then you go down, you got wide receiving room out there. You've got the Packers rated the highest in the NFC North, the Bears right behind them, the Vikings, and then the Lions finishing last in that. I would completely agree with that list right there. Tight ends, you got Sam Laporta, TJ Hawkinson, Cole Komet, and then the Packers, you got Musgrave and Kraft. They are ranked four, which I do agree with, but I think Luke Musgrave is going to turn some heads this year, of course. He needs to stay healthy and stay out on the football field, but the Duke can create lots of separation. Tucker Craft is a multi-purpose type tight end. He can do it all. So that's super exciting that there there's much upside. Their offensive line it has the Lions rated the best in the NFC North, which I agree with. Packers right behind them. Vikings finishing third, the Bears fourth on that list. And then you've got a defensive line. You got the Packers rated the top the top four defensive line. Lions right behind them, Vikings, then Bears. And then when it comes to edge rushers, of course, the Packers are number one in the NFC North, which I completely back and get. You got the Lions finishing second, Vikings third, Bears fourth with Sweat and Walker. And then you've got linebacking room here. They've got the Bears rated the highest for linebackers. You got the Packers rated second for the best linebacker room out there. And then you got the Lions and then the Vikings. Of course, is just the NFC North cornerbacks. You've got Bears, Packers, Vikings, Lions. You've got Packers with Jair Alexander and Eric Stokes. If Eric Stokes can stay healthy, I can see the Packers surpassing the Bears on that. Of course, that is a very talented Bears defense there, but Jair Alexander, if he can keep his head on straight and stay healthy, same thing with Stokes, they could surpass the Bears and become the best um, in the NFC North when it comes to cornerbacks. Safety room, of course, we had Xavier McKinney and you got rookie Javon Buller. Packers are rated second just behind the lines there. Um, Lions have a super talented set of safeties there in Branch and Joseph. And the Packers, unfortunately, saw what they could do out there um, in the secondary. Um, and then you've got special teams, Packers. I'm um, sorry, you got the Packers finishing third on that list behind the Bears and Vikings, and then Lions last on that list. And then it got coaches breakdown. Of course, there's some talented coaches in the NFC North. You got the Packers ranked first. Of course, this is CBS putting this uh, content out there. Lines with Dan Campbell finishing second. Vikings third. Bears fourth with Ibra Flus. Of course, completely agree with that list as well. Leave your comments. Let me know your thoughts on that list and where the Packers stack up in the NFC North. And as always, go Pack Go.